Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash I don't work here lady, so sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. I don't work there anymore, figure it out yourself or call a store with a competent manager. Once upon a time, way back in the days of yore, I was a young lad seeking my first legitimate employment after high school. Seeing as I had only just recently turned 17, early graduate by two years, and lived in a rural area, a lot of options were close to me. Sure, I could work under the table like I always had before, but it was time to start working a real job. So, I hopped in my hand-me-down vehicle, drove the 40 minutes into town, and started putting in job applications. One of the places I applied to was an arcade. For those of you born after 1995, this was an establishment where you found video games, skee-ball, and games of skill and chance which you could play for a fee. Example can be seen in Season 2 of Stranger Things. I was hired at the arcade by a manager who was about to leave his role as a manager to take a better paying job working in a parts manufacturing plant, who had trained his replacement to take over for him. Cool cool, except right after he leaves, replacement gets arrested for simple possession, ends up losing his job as well. No store manager. Area manager comes in, sees our staff is basically me, a young woman who consistently shows up late and does the bare minimum, and a stoner friend of our former replacement manager. After what happened with him, area manager decides he needs to replace the manager with someone else, and brings us up to full staff. Around 6 to 7 people, basically. But in the interim, we'll fill in for the manager duties he can. But he needs someone to handle the daily manager's duties he can't because he's responsible for a bunch of different stores and corporate stuff. Long story short, I get a crash course in managerial training with what I even knew then was a laughable excuse for a pay rise in compensation. No real authority or position in exchange for a bunch of responsibility. Time passes, his first candidate to take over the store is a train wreck. He gets a replacement manager by promoting the fully trained assistant store manager, hereafter ASM, of another store on the condition that they get a replacement. Cue my transfer. New store has an awesome manager. She promotes the younger sister of the former assistant store manager to be her new assistant store manager. Didn't bother me, the company had a policy against letting people under 18 take management roles, and I didn't want it anyway. After my experience, I was looking forward to less stress and responsibility. New store manager leaves the store when her husband, Air Force, gets transferred to a new duty station. The assistant store manager is now the store manager, doesn't name a new assistant manager. The assistant manager dislikes me. I spend months working there. I sell a birthday party package, something the company wants us to do as much as possible, but that hadn't been done at that store in the entire time the assistant manager had been working there, and apparently no one but me, because we did it all the time at the other store, knew how to do it. One morning before opening, I'm going through the opening procedures when the assistant manager and the area manager are there. Things come to a head. Area manager is there because the store is losing money. The assistant manager accuses me of stealing from the store. I turn to the area manager and give my two verbal weeks notice on the spot. Say that I am not a thief and refuse to work with someone like the assistant store manager after they've accused me of it. Fast forward two weeks and one day, the day of the birthday party that I'm the only one at the store who knows our procedures for. I get a phone call asking if I'll come in and work it. I don't work there, remember? Well, can you at least tell us how we're supposed to do this? Try calling another store, one with a competent manager for advice. I'm not obligated to help you since I don't work there anymore. She started to raise her voice, but I hung up and didn't answer her call back. Edit. 
since tone doesn't carry well over the internet, and the fact that I was being mildly facetious when I acted as if no one born after 95 knows what an arcade is, I would like to make clear that it was meant to be in tongue in cheek, making fun of the whole only 90s kids shtick rather than taking a jab at younger people. Unfortunately, the internet doesn't always convey tone well, and so it seems that wasn't clear, so I apologize. I am aware arcades still exist, though I will say that it's my impression more rural ones have seemed to die out mostly in the wake of consoles, and that younger people know what they are. Heck, I've lived in Japan, where they still have multiple story arcades. As for the timeline, I don't want to get too specific, because identifying information and everything, but I was born during the middle of the Reagan administration and was 17 when this happened. Home consoles were already a thing, though gaming wasn't mainstream yet the way it is now, at least in my rural area. 56k was still the standard unless you were wealthy. For those pointing out that theft does not equal losing money, you're correct. Our machines had counters to report the number of tokens that had passed through them, and that would be compared to the number of tokens that had been sold by the coin exchange machine every week at collection by the management. I did at the previous store. The numbers never matched, for several reasons, but they were not expected to. I found out months later from a former co-worker it was theft. I just had absolutely nothing to do with it the discovery, or any of the fallout. By that time, I was getting ready to start college. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I read the uh, 1995 comment and after, I was like, oh, people are gonna get triggered at this. <laughs> Drowned looking college student. This happened about a year ago while I was studying abroad. The university group I was with was visiting New Zealand and took a ride on a tour boat in one of the fjords on the South Island. We got back to the boat slash bus terminal, but due to the biblical rainstorm going on, we were soaked to the bone despite our rain gear. Once we were in the terminal, I quickly realized I was leaving a significant trail of water. So, not wanting to contribute to the inconsiderate American tourist stereotype, I stepped outside under the entrance awning to try and wring as much water out of my clothes as I could. An important note, at some point before our tour boat returned, a convoy of tour buses had arrived and disgorged a massive group of Japanese tourists. So, there I am, in my shorts, leggings and shirt with a very prominent image of my university mascot, wringing out my jacket and hat over a storm drain when one of the aforementioned tourists, BM, the busman, approaches me. The busman saying something I don't understand due to my single-minded focus on wringing every last drop of water out of my hat. Me realizing he's talking to me. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Where is the bus? Me, realizing I'm the only non-Japanese person around, sorry sir, I don't actually work here. Where is the bus? Me, attempting to redirect BM to the uniform wearing employees, if you'll step in the terminal, there is an information desk that should be able to help. The bus man, increasingly agitated, where is the bus? Me, also starting to get agitated, I think it's that one, pointing at a random bus. The bus man walks away toward the bus I pointed to without further comment. I then retreated back to my group, confused but slightly less soaked. Well, I guess the bus man's gonna be enjoying a, a nice bus ride to some random place now. <laughs> Brown skin plus orange bikini equals poolside attendant. This happened a couple months ago on a vacation to a popular US sunny destination. I was with my partner's family, they are white, and I am a brown skinned Latin American woman. English is my second language, but I am fluent in both. We were staying in their timeshare resort, first couple of hours since arrival. 
My mother-in-law and I had just enjoyed a couple delectable cocktails and we, mother-in-law, father-in-law, partner and I, had decided to head up to the hot tub after the sun had set. I was wearing a highlighter orange bikini with a black fishnet looking cover up and bare feet, flip flops in a tote bag, my hair up in a clip. I looked flushed and a little sunburn, no makeup on. We settled in a hot tub but I felt a little too warm after a while, so I got out to explore. I was walking around the pool and looked out of a balcony onto the pool and the hot tub below. Then was about to lap around and back into the hot tub when an older man, OM, sitting on a pool chair started speaking to me. The old man mumbles something but I cannot hear him because the wind is in my face and he's speaking quietly. Excuse me? Just sitting here for a little, not swimming, just hanging out. I won't make trouble. Me, thinking the guy is being flirty or friendly, laughs and tries to turn around to the safety of my family. Haha, <laughs> sounds good. So, is it okay? Can I sit here? Me, still not understanding, but thinking the guy is being weird and feeling uncomfortable. Sure, you go ahead and enjoy. Just let me know when I have to go. I'll be good and listen. Me, terrified, this guy now wants me to do something to him. I start backing away and hope my family is looking my way. Of course, perfect timing for my father-in-law and partner to take off to unknown parts, leaving mother-in-law and facing away from me. I smile nervously. Suddenly, it dawns on me. Wait, do you think I work here? The old man looks puzzled. Yeah, don't you? I look around quickly and it dawns on me that I'm the only non-white guest in the area and all the attendants and the lifeguards are black or brown people. I tend to be pretty perceptive of where I am, but as I mentioned, I was with my family, had drank a few cocktails and felt safe near my partner, so I didn't take my usual care to notice the environment. The old man continues to go on about how you look like you work here, etc. I look down at my above mentioned outfit, pointedly look at the lifeguard dressed in bright red shorts and white t-shirt. No, I'm on vacation with my in-laws. Well, uh, you just have an air of authority. Turning redder and continuing to backpedal. Can't remember what he said, but he was clearly embarrassed. Okay. I turn around and hurry back for my mother-in-law, who hasn't even noticed anything happened. I tell her the story, we laugh it off, and from that moment till checkout, I avoid wandering around by myself. Oh, that was that was weird. I, I don't know what to think about that. I, I feel like he was probably just being creepy slash racist there, but I don't know. Well, technically he did work there, just not how I thought. I work in film and television as a set dresser. Basically, my job is to put everything you see into the set. The couches, tables, lamps, picture all the nicks and knacks on the shelves, the drapes on the windows, we even put in the fake light switches. Basically, if what you're seeing on the screen is not costumes, props or makeup, a set dresser is probably the one responsible for putting it there. Now, to understand this story, I first have to explain how the electricity works on a set on a soundstage. In your home, when you need to plug something in, you just plug it into a wall outlet. But on the set, the walls are fake. They are just simple frames made out of 1x3 and sheeted a layer of Luan on really thin plywood. Over the course of a show, sets are routinely torn down, rebuilt or changed. In short, everything is temporary, so we don't hardwire up electricity the way you would in a permanent building. Instead, behind the scenes, off camera, is yards and yards of cable carrying the power to where it needs to be. High amperage cables take power to distro boxes, which in turn go to junction boxes. Lunch boxes, we call them, where everything is plugged in with a standard outlet plug. 
This allows for power to be quickly moved to where it needs to be when they need to place a light somewhere for a shot and move it out the way for the next one. It's also worth pointing out that my job as a set dresser means I'm not usually around when the actual filming of the scenes take place. Our job is to dress and prepare the set before they are filmed, so they are ready to go for the shooting crew. Then, when the filming is done, we come in to wrap the sets and reset them for the next day's filming. As a result, we don't have much interaction with the shooting crew and don't always get to know all the people who work on that part of the crew that well. Anyway, I hope that's a good enough explainer, so on to my story. My day starts out like normal. We start a few hours before the shooting crew to get the sets ready for the day's filming. We reset the sets from the previous day shooting, putting back anything that had been moved out of place and give the sets a quick clean and vacuum. And for one of the day scenes, we also had to put up different curtains on one of the sets. The curtains we put up were brand new, and so they had creases in them from being in the packaging and needed to be steamed to remove them, so they don't look like brand new curtains. At this point, the shooting crew is starting to trickle in to begin their day, and the filming lights on the stage have been powered up. As a general rule on a film set, it's a good idea to check before plugging anything high wattage into the set power, so you don't overload the circuit and blow a fuse. And since the high power set lights had already been turned on, I did the right thing and asked before I plugged the steamer in. I see another crew member nearby. I don't remember what it was that made me think he was an electrician, perhaps it was something he was doing, or perhaps I was mistaking him for someone else. Like I said, we don't always get to interact that much with the shooting crew. But I call out to him, is it okay if I plug in this steamer here? He answers, sure, I don't see a problem with that. And then as I'm about to plug it in, but I'm the sound guy, what do I know? You should probably ask an electrician. Like I said in the title, he technically did work here. Well, that was a lot of build-up to the short end, but yeah, I mean, he went with the joke, but then probably was like, oh, that's probably not safe. <laughs> hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now, or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like, and if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.